welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new today's video <laughs> i have been wanting to record for so long it's pretty much like one of the first things i wanted to do when i started doing youtube and i finally feel like i'm in a position <laughs> to do it um basically i'm going to share with you guys the tips tricks hacks um how i deal with fibro the well i'm going to start off talking about myself for a second kind of because not everybody will have the same symptoms as me because obviously it affects everybody differently and whatnot um but yeah i'm going to talk about the things that help tips the good um the the aids that i like to use um yeah just a load of things that uh, i've been using to help um that i want to share so <laughs> the reason that i couldn't film this video sooner is because i have been told for the past few years four years to be exact that i've got fibro but i was never technically diagnosed until recently, it's actually like two weeks ago, I went to the hospital, I had an assessment, and he said it is fibro. Um, referred me for some other tests and some blood work, but he said no, it's it's fibro. Um, and yeah, and I also had a phone call today from, because I've been referred to a fibro group at my hospital, where they give you more knowledge about fibro, how to deal with fibro, different exercises, diets, and everything like that. So I more than likely will do another video in a few more weeks, um, six weeks until I start the course, and then it's eight weeks. So I'll probably do it at the end of the year, beginning of next year, on all about the things I learned in that course um, and understanding. But he made me, the, the person I was speaking over the phone, he made me feel completely normal and not going crazy because there's certain things that I do, and I think it's, just me being crazy but actually it's a different fibro so I feel so much better now like I was just saying to my husband I said I brush my daughter's hair and every time I brush it the, I like go like this to, to brush it again but the brush will just fling across the room um, because my grip goes and I've just been told it's because my muscles are weak and my grip's re weaker um, and it's completely normal and it's completely normal to walk into stuff <laughs> <laughs> I am so thankful for it to do with fibro and it's not just me being clumsy because I'm getting older because that's what, seriously I thought it was so yeah I'm going to basically talk about the um, different ways that fibro affects me um, obviously tiredness is a big one, sleep is a big one um, and obviously pain um, I suffer pain mainly in my shoulders, neck, back and my knee so um, different things can affect it and it's basically about balance so because a lot of the things that I have for my knee irritate my shoulders and it's basically like that so I have to find a good balance to try and deal with it um, and realise obviously what I'm still kind of realising um, and trying to deal with the limits for things but with aids and things that I use it's so much better. Um, I have not wrote I have not wrote any notes down whatsoever. I'm pretty unprepared, but I think sometimes when I just speak from experience and just speak without looking at a phone, I think things are so much easier to uh, explain. Um, what area should I start with first? Right. Um, I've spoke about well, obviously I got diagnosed basically I've had fibro for four years I've not been diagnosed with it until recently but I've had it for four years they have a feeling it's my daughter's c-section that triggered it um, because sometimes a traumatic event or something traumatic to your body can trigger it um, so I think basically it started technically five years ago but I only started um, getting help around four years ago when my shoulders started playing up um, after I had my daughter, um, I had a by C-section and the muscles in my stomach were too far apart so I got physio. Um, and then obviously a few months down the line my shoulders started hurting so I went back to my doctor and I said I think it's my, my stomach again. Um, I think because she said obviously when I got discharged she says my muscles were almost there so she'll discharge me. So I said I think my stomach muscles aren't 
help and miss support my shoulders, which is causing pain. So they referred me again to the physio under that department who began doing some exercises and we eventually realised that actually it's nothing to do with that. Um, and then I got referred to normal physio um, to try and get movement back and strength back, which didn't help really whatsoever. Um, it made physio was painful. Um, he asked if I felt a relief after physio because you're meant to feel like a bit looser and more relaxed and not as much pain and I was like no probably it was my worst painful day after physio. So he discharged me, he wanted me to go to pain management clinic so we went back to the doctors to get referred and <laughs> the doctors refused to refer me, <laughs> said that they can deal with it themselves, I don't need a referral to hospital. So they put me on amitriptyline and slowly over the four years it got higher and higher and higher and higher to now where I'm prescribed the highest dose of 75 milligrams. Um, yeah, and then basically I, I love the gym. That's when I started having problems with my shoulders when I was into the gym after I had my daughter. So then I decided to go back to the gym, but because I couldn't really do anything with upper body, I did, but I didn't mean like stretches and stuff, that I will do some lower body stuff. So I started doing spin because I loved spin, like when you do it to the music and all stuff like that. So I started doing that. And then when I was cycling, my knees started grinding and clicking. And then basically it got difficult, well, it got painful to walk, but I still kept going. Um, and then getting up off the seat, so like standing and pedaling really, really hurt. And to the point where, yeah, it just got so painful to deal with it. And then last year, which is probably the first thing I want to really speak about with AIDS, um, the end of last year I started using a walking stick. Now, if you've got problems with your feet, with your knees, with your balance, um, I suppose even with you, like, your hips, I, and your back, actually, <laughs> most places of your body, <laughs> um, anything that requires like, if, where you're unsteady, I'd say. Um, I know people with lower back problems have walking sticks because they're not very steady. Um, same with me, obviously my knee goes and things, um, and my I've got a bad foot as well, but that helps because it's on the side of my knees. But I definitely, definitely recommend a walking stick. Um, when I first looked into getting one, I was very reluctant of using one, and I kept thinking this isn't going to do anything because I basically wanted it when I was in so much pain that I couldn't walk anymore that I wanted the walking stick to help. It was mainly for Disneyland because we'll be up walking via mobile and I was really worried that I would make the trip a downer and negative for my kids and I did not want that at all. So I got a stick, I got a foldable stick to carry in my backpack not even had the like mindset of using it at all. Um, I've, I mean, I've spoken about using a walking stick, but basically, it ended up me using the walking stick from start instead of me waiting until I was being in pain and using it. And the way that I use it is, you hold it in your opposite arm to the opposite side that's bothering you. And basically, when I walk forward with my left leg, I bring the stick forward. So it's kind of like I'm using that with my leg and they're both moving forward at the same time. So it's like stick, left leg, forward, right leg, stiff, left leg, stiff, stick, left leg, forward, right leg, then goes, and then stick, leg, forward, right. Um, and then when you go down the stairs, I always remember it is up being good like heaven down being bad like hell that's the way that I got told to remember it so basically you use your good leg when you go first you lose your you use your good leg first when you go up and you use your bad leg first when you go down I'm still getting out of that um I still sometimes well I don't forget but I realize after I've done it that that's not the right way of doing it um but yeah I highly recommend a stick because it takes the weight off 
So instead of every time, you've got to think, when you put one leg forward, you put all your weight on that leg. If I then have a stick and my arm and bring them both forward, I am then putting half my weight on that leg and half my other weight on this arm. Um, which means my knee is not taking the full force of all my body weight, which means that then I can do a lot more than what I could do normally. So if I, for example, I mean, I try not to use it much when I'm in the house. When I'm uh, like cleaning and stuff, you'll see in my cleaning videos that I use it. It's because I'm constantly on the move. Um, but when I'm actually inside, just not doing much, I will not use it. Um, sometimes I feel like I need to because it will hurt. But I tend to use like the walls and stuff if I need to kind of like lean on something. Um, but yeah, I tried it once during lockdown, well, after lockdown, when I was taking the kids kind of like onto a field. It wasn't planned, we was meant to go to drop something off. They weren't ready yet and we already left. So we nipped the park for a second for the kids to run about for 15 minutes before we had to leave. And I literally stepped up the car, stepped on the field and I was like, right, I have to stay here. <laughs> I'm not going any further because it is hurting. So yeah, it helps loads. Like my distance that I come up without a stick is so bad, but with a stick, so much better and I didn't like I said didn't realize how much of like a benefit it would be um, to go with a stick yes you're probably gonna get funny looks and yes people that you know are gonna ask questions um, which was the, one of the main reasons that I did want to like use it to begin with but it is coming out of my comfort zone it's either I get asked that one random question or get stared at by a couple of people or be in pain and not being in pain is far more important to me than getting silly looks of people or people asking me what's wrong um to me using a stick in front of family was the biggest thing strangers i don't really care because i'm usually in the bubble so i don't notice anyone around me but family members that was my hardest thing to do um is do that with obviously my husband and my kids Obviously I used it in front of them first and then started to use it in front of my side of the family and then now the husband's side of the family I've probably only just shown most of my husband's side that like I use a stick because like Christmas and things, getting out of the car, walking to the house and sitting down wasn't a massive deal. I could do that um, but going out with family like shopping or to a restaurant <laughs> where I'd have to do more walking then I need it. Um, so yeah, highly, highly recommend a stick. I know it's very nerve wracking and something that it's a massive step, but trust me, to me, I am so glad that I started using one because it has been, that's why I mentioned it first, I'm probably taking five minutes explaining this. To me, it's the biggest, biggest beneficial aid that I have used ever. Um, if you're, not sure if it was work, will work, like I was, go on Amazon, mine was £4 something, <laughs> it's a foldable one, so like I said, if I, when I first got it, I wasn't planning on using it all the time, um, fold and put it in my bag, and then now it's a lot easier, so like when I'm in the car, if I've got the car full of people, I can fold it and put it under my chair, or put it under the passenger chair, or for example, we're going away, so when I get to the, when I get to the airport and on the plane, I can fold it and put it in my bag, um, it's just easier, um, I fold it and put it next to me, it's just easy because I feel like it's not in the way um, when I use a folding one but I am debating about getting a full one soon. But yeah that is the biggest thing and I'm, I'm sorry that I'm rambling now but yeah that's the biggest thing. One of also the biggest things I would say is not an aid, it's more mentally. Um, I struggled really bad mentally when my legs were, when my knee was affected because I knew I couldn't really use my arms very well, but my knee I was like, I rely on my legs now. And basically for you to recognise that if mentally you're struggling, um, that it's okay to mentally struggle. I got told it's okay to grieve the things I cannot do or grieve the activities I can't do with my kids or be mad at myself, it is okay but don't stay there, um, except this is my life, this is the way that I've got to live and it might get better in, in the future, it might get worse in the future but at the minute 
it's okay. I'm okay. So that's one of the biggest things. And to be honest, I still dip in and out of it. And I think a lot of people do still, even when they've like accepted it. But that's the biggest thing when you, yeah, mentally it's a struggle because you have to change and adapt so many things. Um, the next one that kind of comes with it for me is accepting help. It's okay if you're struggling with something. If you can't do it, ask for help. I have a big problem with asking people for help because I feel like I have to do it. I'm an independent person, I have to do it myself. Um, but I have to accept the fact that I need help. Not Sometimes not even physically, sometimes with extra stuff. So yeah, sometimes I might not be able to, like I don't know, lift the rubbish out of the bin and you need some money to do that for me. Or I might struggle, I don't know, cooking dinner that day or just loads of different things. So it's just, and the kids, <laughs> um, yeah, accepting help for them or them accepting them to help me because that was a that was a biggie asking my son for help and getting my son to help me when I should be looking after him. Another thing which is kind of like rolling onto it and I've to be honest I've only just got my kind of like head right with this one. This one was probably the biggest thing. It's kind of like accepting help but it's also accepting I have a problem. So for example, I now have a blue badge. Um, I've also been parking in the kids' school parking lot for the past few months. <laughs> I want to say a few months, but it would be this year, I'd say. Um, pretty much for most of this year. And I got it in my mind when they said that I could park there, um, that I didn't need to, that I would be completely fine not parking there and somebody else might need it more than me. And yeah, I realised that I do need it or I wouldn't have got given the permission to do it. And it was the same with the blue badge. Um, I was like, I don't need to park in the disabled access park, like parking places, no, it's fine. I'll park in a normal one, even though I have this badge to say I'm allowed to park over there and then struggle. So I've accepted that now. I know I need those, um, especially now with COVID, we have a one-way system at school. I have to walk further rather than get out of my car, drop the kids off, get back in. I have to walk a lot further. Um, and actually, the car park was closed for a little bit because they were resurfacing it, and I had to park normally and do it, and it's so bad. Um, I find it so hard, but it was only a couple of days, um, and I'm parking in there, so I'm so grateful now. And I've also realised with the blue badge, it doesn't help me because it's closer. It helps me because of the space between the cars. Because when I get out the car, I have to open my door pretty much fully, like twist to myself, put both feet on the floor and then kind of like I put my elbow on the, like my um, chair and then lift myself up that way. So yeah, I found that getting out the car like that helps and when I'm in a regular car parking space, sometimes you can barely get out the door, let alone open your door pretty much fully to get out. So yeah accepting facts like just accepting that but also applying for stuff you may not think you need it but trust me once you get it you realize how much easier and better it is we don't have to if i say we don't have to be in pain all the time we pretty much are in pain all the time but we don't have to find things difficult we can just find them manageable um so i would highly recommend that if you are in problems with walking distance like i said even back because back pain can not help with walking, have a look for a blue badge and see if it would help because it has been a huge help for me um, and I highly recommend it. Next things, I'm trying to think of more mobility ones but I need to think of the rest of them. Right, I'm gonna think of kitchen because um, kitchen is also one of those that I struggle with. With the kitchen, I have recently bought a stool. It is called a massage stool. It's meant to be for like beauty therapists and all that stuff where it can go very, very low, but it can also go very, very high. And the reason I wanted it like that is a low for when, if the husband's friends come, they can sit on it when he's at PC with him. Or I can put it really, really high so I can sit next, like sit on my chair to the side at the counter to do things that I need to do. 
So for example, if I'm washing the pots and my knee goes, because it goes several times usually when I'm sat washing the pots and I'm trying to like bend it and stuff, um, I can just sit on the chair and do it. But not everybody's the same, but I shall also struggle sitting long periods of times because of my shoulders and my shoulder blades to the point where it burns. So I have to take it's the same with the walking stick now, I have to have that, but it sometimes hurts my shoulders. I have to kind of like alternate between standing, sitting, standing, sitting. That's what works for me. In the kitchen as well is, I highly recommend prepping food. I have, um, I don't think it's come out yet, but I'm gonna um, do a video all about prepping my meals. It might seem like a big thing, but the days you do cook, um, make more because it's not going to be any different for you. And then either put them in freezer containers, I don't like my hair like that, freezer containers or put them in like the foil containers that you can put in the oven. For, so for example today for dinner we're having tuna pasta bake so I'm going to be making it but instead of putting it in a large pan for the whole family to eat because I won't be eating that, um, I then put it in like this little silver foil bits for my son or for my husband, put them in the oven, all the rest, I am um, making these silver things, put the toppings and cheese on it and then put it in the oven. I only cook three days a week, sometimes even less depending on how I feel because I've got pre-cooked meals that are in the freezer and I don't feel bad that technically my family are eating freezer meals because they are fresh, well not fresh, they are homemade meals that I previously made but froze them. So it makes me feel a little bit better about myself that I'm not just buying freezer meals, that I'm making them and then freezing them. So it still feels like they're homemade, um, but it doesn't tire me out. Um, with the cooking as well, get as many things already pre-prepared. So for example, I have mainly my veg frozen. So like onions, frozen, I don't like frozen mushrooms, so I don't have frozen mushrooms. But you can also, you can already buy pre-cooked mushrooms, they don't have to be frozen. Frozen broccoli, carrots, um, cauliflower. Also if I want fresh um, veg, because I prefer fresh veg, it's crunchier. I, you can buy free, you can buy pre-cut and washed veg that just come in a pack where I buy the cauliflower, carrots and, and broccoli. Um, and it's already cut for you, it's already done for you, and you just stick it in a pan or stick it in a microwave or however you want to cook it. So instead of peeling potatoes, cutting up veg, things that would be quite painful to do, even when sat, like, sat down and doing it, um, because I've got a carpal tunnel as well, <laughs> then yeah, buy, buy pre-made pre-cut stuff, even pre-made stuff if you really want to. When I first started using them, I thought, oh, it's lazy. And every time I do a food haul, I explain myself saying, struggle chopping. This is why I got pre-made stuff. Same with mashed potato. I struggle cutting potatoes, like peeling them. I struggle with a hot pan of boiling water because I have so many times that I spill it um, all over me or all over something and um, mashing it, that mashing stuff, that is hard for me. So I buy pre-made mash. I have freezer one where they're like the little things and you put um, butter and milk and put them in the microwave. Or I actually buy the fresh one from Aldi. And if we don't end up using it, then I'll put it in the fr a freezer to freeze it. So then I can unfreeze it and it's already made. Um, but yeah, I kind of felt bad when I first did that because obviously it's not homemade mash, but it's better than not cooking a meal at all. Find easy ways to help. I also have a, a cutter, which I don't use very much because I don't cut things anymore. It's basically like a big round plastic thing and inside it there's blades and they're like crossed over. Um, and you basically put whatever you want to cut underneath it and then you push it down. I don't have much strength in my upper body, so that was a bit of a struggle. So I stopped using that. But if you've got strength in your body and you can push it down, because basically when you push it down, the middle then twists, push it down, twists, push it down. So it chops it quite finely. You can adjust it. But yeah, there's stuff like that you can use if you are struggling and you don't want to buy pre-cut like cut and stuff. Yeah, 
it's hard to get into a position where I'm not in pain. Um, I try and explain it to the husband, he thinks I'm crazy, where I'm comfortable but in pain. He's like, that makes no sense, how are you comfortable? I says, because my body, I feel my body relaxed. But because it's relaxed, it opens me up to pain. <laughs> it's really, really hard to explain it, but I have loads of things to help me sleep. First off, my medication, the amitriptylin, is meant to help with sleep and it's classed as like a sedative. So that helps. Um, sleeping aids would be pillows. Pillows are your best friend. So um, these are all my pillows at the mitt. And I have right at the back there, which is blended in this one right here. This one is a giant pillow that goes all the way down. And that is a pregnancy pillow that I use with my daughter. I use that to basically do what I do when I was pregnant. I put it in between my knees. I make sure my body's straight because when I'm hunched like this it hurts my back when I'm in the middle of the night. And yeah, it kind of like makes my back kind of straight. So instead of my, when I, cause I like to sleep on my side, instead of when I'm on my slide, side, my body's bent funny because my knees are twitching. If I have this pillow there, it like lying just fine. So it's meant to be better. So yeah, I've got that giant pregnancy pillow there. And then my pillow here is a, um, a special pillow. I'll show you. It's gonna make my, my bed a mess, but. It is basically a different pillow than like an everyday pillow. So it is a pillow that's got two kind of like bulges on it like this. Um, the biggest one goes, which one's biggest, this one. The biggest one goes under your neck like that. And then the smallest one goes at the top of your head. Um, this is so when you're lying down, your spine on your head isn't then bent funny. With the support under your head, your spine is like aligned again. So highly recommend these. Trust me, the first time you use them, they were all not comfortable. They, you don't like, you know when you like see a bed and it's full of pillows and you're like, oh I just love to lie in that because it looks so comfortable. It's not comfortable, um, but it's beneficial. So the first couple of nights when I used it, put my head down on it and I'm like, oh, so uncomfortable. But it's not at the same time, it's because it's quite hard. Um, it's like a mattress, isn't it? You go on a really nice fluffy mattress, you think, oh, it's so nice, but it'll hurt your back. If you go on a firm one, you think, oh, it's not that comfortable, but you don't have a painful back. It's like that. So yeah, even though it's not the comfiest thing, and if I give someone that to basically go to sleep on, they'll probably look at me like I'm crazy. And yeah, but it helps. I struggle with normal pillows now. So that pillow helps me with my, cause I used to wake up in agony with neck pain. Um, the only thing I struggle with now is low back pain when I wake up, but I mean, it better than being pain everywhere, I suppose. But yeah, they do help. Um, pillows for downstairs. I have got, I think it's called a lumbar pillow. Um, there's different ones you can get. Because we have a scatterback um, sofa, I can align the cushions to the way I like them. But I was finding that because I was sitting for long periods of time, my lower back would suffer. Um, it's always been like that. Even when I was in a wheelchair once I had my son, I always had lower back pain uh, if I sat down for too long. So, um, yeah, I can be comfortable at the same time that I can sit down for long periods of time on the sofa because I can adjust everything. So I'll be sat on the sofa and adjust for my shoulders, but then like I said, it wouldn't support my lower back. So I got one of these kind of like big cuddly pushed, big cuddly cushions that was basically like a back and then arms. So it goes against my lower back and then kind of like cuddles me. Um, I suppose it's like the pregnancy pillow, but it's already shaped like that like that um this one's only for lower back support so it's only probably about this um thick at the back but you can get ones that are full length so for example if you set a chair that would be a full length one would be perfect because i've got this on the sofa and i like to kind of like switch where i'm not just sat like this i like might have my knee up and twisted that way or twisted this way um that one i can just adjust so 
a big one obviously I can't really you got to keep it with you back there but because it's so small I can twist it around and all things like that but yeah that really really helps I got it from Amazon it was fairly cheap um, the cheapest one I found but I don't think they've got any stock anymore but just search lumber pillows because they're, they're like back support pillows when you sat down for long periods of time but same with lumber support with anything else I've also got a back support in my car it's one of those things that kind of like curves like that to help your spine stay straight because like I said I suffer with my shoulders and my back um so anything that I can use to keep my spine straight um I will now under probably the toughest one um that I'm still getting used to because there's still some aids that I'm going to get um this is probably the toughest one for me and it is my bathroom um i have a toilet support thing i don't know what it's called if you do comment down um it's basically i have funny toilet seats or toilet shapes i think they're slightly square that she said um basically because the lower you sat down the difficult it is to get up basically the more strength you need to stand um, so the higher the toilet is, the easier it is for me to get up, like my car, my car is, my husband made fun of me when I first got it because he said it's a disabled person's car and I could not be more thankful that I got that car because my car is high, my husband's car's low and I really struggle getting out of it, um, but the toilet for example, my toilets are quite low um, but they're also square so there was going to get a heightened toilet seat so it's thicker um but they wouldn't fit on my toilet so oh i hate it but i love it it's like a love hate relationship and um, i have got a toilet um stand um when i first got it i like cried <laughs> i was in denial because he basically brought it in and said here you go and i went thanks <laughs> and then i looked at it and i must have been staring at it for like an hour just I'm not using that no no not using it and now I really like it because it means it's comfier than a toilet seat it's higher than my toilet um, and it's got like handles here I'll show you in a second because I have not shared this on my channel whatsoever because I still find it embarrassing and no one really knows that it's there. Sorry, I got interrupted by the husband. Um, yes, the toilet seat situation is the area that I, I'm like, like I said, it's a love-hate relationship. I hate it because it reminds me of being an old, like, it reminds me of an old person's home. Um, but it's not as bad as that because they were like little round bits with holes. This is actually like molded. I'll show you. Um, but yeah, that helps. Um, like I said, it's difficult to, that was one of the things, like I said, accept the fact that I need areas of help. Um, so yeah, the other thing, which I haven't got yet because there's been lots of cover full with the house, um, what is a seat in the shower? Um, because I hate showers. They're like the most painful thing ever because hurts standing, hurts. Especially when you want a shower to kind of like the warmth and the heat to relieve the pain. For me, it's not relieving because it causes me pain. Not the water obviously, but being in the shower. Um, so I do need to get a shower seat and I have seen one I like. So I need to get it ordered pronto. They're just very expensive. Um, basically, I've been under an OT. So another thing, if you do not get um, a referral from your doctor to an OT, you can self-refer. So just go on to like self-refer to an OT in your area you just google it and it, well I think I just went on like the council website they asked me what area I was in and then I referred myself and then basically the OT will go through the things you struggle with day-to-day -day life stuff and assess you and give you things to help you deal with it basically and help around the house so things you can do more yourself so um yeah they gave me that toilet seat thing 
They also wanted to give me a shower seat because our shower is small and the ensuite, I don't use a bath. Too difficult. <laughs> so, um, but because our shower is so small, they wanted to fit a, a foldable seat. So it means that it would not take up any room in there when my husband showers, but then it was comfortable to me to sit on. But unfortunately, our landlord, because the house is rented, said no. <laughs> well, technically they didn't say no. They said that they'll fit it, that we can have it, but once it's taken out, they need to replace the tiles and everything around it, which the it's basically a charity that the OT works with don't do replacement tiles <laughs> so it's something that I have to physically fund myself to then um, help so that's the only one thing that I'm, I am still waiting on getting um, which I do need um, what else have I covered oh as I said pillows were your best friend also things around you so for example because I've got a painful knee my knee hurts when it's not well it hurts when it's too straight and it hurts when it's too bent so I always keep my leg elevated so in my living room I've got kind of like a footstool poof or whatever you call it and I keep my foot on that just very easily pain relief things are uh, you have to figure out which one's more beneficial heat heat or cold for me, heat, but for my knee, cold. Well, saying that heat helps it as well, but for some reason, because my knee swells, um, when it's swell, swelling, <laughs> cold. Um, when it just hurts, heat. Heat for me hurts any pain area. But obviously when you swell, um, like cold is meant to be better, because sometimes my knee can feel hot. So when it feels hot, I don't want them to put something hot on it. So there's different things you can get, there is, I have got knee bandages, so a knee support that you then can put one in, a heat pack in, um, I also have a wrap which is basically the cold packs that you can put in the freezer but you can also put them in the microwave, you put them into this thing and then it's like a big elastic band with velcro on it and you wrap it around whatever hurts, so I can use it on my shoulder, I can use it on my back. Can use it on my knee which is what I mainly use it for um, but yeah that is beneficial for me I also have uh, like I said pillows your best friend again I also have one of those sleeping travel pillows best thing ever because I have problems with my trapezius muscle the muscle that holds your head up my neck can go so it feels like I'm holding up a massive weight that is my head um, and it's painful so what I do is when I lie down I still can't unless I'm lying down on that pillar like if I'm lying on the sofa um, I can't get my head into a position to where it's supported so I get a travel pillow and then lie down and that supports the back of my neck so yeah it's a, it's a fast fix so if you've got a travel pillow and you don't want to spend as much on that try it <laughs> um, what next um, tens machines I don't really use these much anymore um, because I don't like the sensation but they basically the only way that it help the tens machine helped me with my shoulders when I used it on my shoulders it's to pretty much rev it up to almost max but when you rev it up to almost max it makes your muscles go crazy <laughs> um, and then I didn't like the sensation very much so I only used it if I desperately desperately had no choice um, you can buy heated power stuff so you can actually buy a knee support that is charged through USB and you switch it on and it's got a heat thing in there so it heats it up which I think is amazing but the tag pricey. I've also got a heat cape which is got like a little dongle thing in it and then you plug it in, you charge this thing, power pack and then you plug it in when you want to use it and there's a little pocket inside you wrap it around you and you close it and that heats it all like my shoulders and stuff which when I'm sat like this and have it on I feel it but I like to lean on it so it gives me like the pressure but the heat as well. Use as gels, sprays as much as you can. So you know like the heat sprays or the cooling sprays and then same with the pack like the um, the heat patches I what we call them. Something wave I think. Um, the ones I like you stick. Well I always thought you stuck them to your skin but you're not meant to stick them to the skin because you can have a reaction. 
so that's why I get the um, the one with a knee thing so you basically put the support on and then put it in the holes so it's touching it's not directly touching your skin last off if you think you have fibro but nobody's listening to you get heard because it took me four years which to be honest from what I've researched on and spoken to people four years is probably an average and that's too long because now that it's taken me four years to get diagnosed I now have to try and not just have pain because of fibro and I have to suffer with the pain because of weak muscles um, because I'm not using my arms I can't like wash my hair mainly because of weak arms like you know when you're lifting a really heavy weight and when you're lifting a really heavy weight you're on a sheet like this mind you that when I was in a shopping bag like when I went into Primark for a Primark call that bag that one bag that didn't really have many things heavy in it my hand was shaking like this because I had just lost all my muscle and muscle is the thing you need not just to have your strength but when you lose the muscle I now like I said have to deal with the, the pain but plus the weakness now of it because of not getting the help that I needed and the support that I needed and personally I felt like I was going crazy like I wasn't taken seriously every time that I went to the doctors and said this hurts, that hurt, whatever hurts all I got told is you're on too much medication we can't hire it we can't give you more you just have to deal with it that was my answer and I'd constantly go to the doctors and when I'd go to the doctors I'd have multiple things to complain about like about my health and there's been many times when the doctors are like you've only got a 15 minute appointment I can only deal with one and I'll be like, so much pain everywhere, which one do I pick? And yeah, my doctors should know my name, like, to my face, because of how many times I've been in, in there to get help and support. I mean, I, like, people I know around me had injections, steroid injections, and they refused the steroid injections with me for good reason, because the trapezius muscle was too big of a muscle to inject, but a doctor tried it. And I'm thankful he did because it didn't work. It did work, but it didn't work for long enough. So I can't have that. But now I know injections don't work there. I have an injection in my wrist because I have carpal tunnel. Um, they said it's the thing I needed to do, but obviously with COVID going off, they were reluctant to do it. So they waited as long as I could, but I was losing more and more feeling in my fingers. So they decided to do it. Um, and I'm so grateful that they did because I am not wearing a wrist support. Now and again, my wrist will ache using a stick does not help with this but um i can manage it now um and i've not really got any it's still a little bit numb on this side but i can use my fingers and my wrist a lot better than i did so i got told this by many people and my sister-in-law mostly saying do not make it like make sure it doesn't take any more time for me to be diagnosed i was meant to get put through pain management four years ago which more than likely would have diagnosed me but my doctors refused i had to fight and argue for them to refer me to a rheumatologist i didn't even know a rheumatologist what that was until someone with fibro told me a doctor just kept saying to me there is no point of diagnosing fibro because you're already on the pain meds to me having a diagnosis means i can get support means when someone asks me what's wrong i have something to say not this that that and the other they think it's this or that yeah i had so many things i point on my body but like this is the doctor said it could be this could be that like with my knee the it's protitis which is like one of the sacs that inflame you're meant to have protitis like a couple of weeks a few weeks and then it goes away but for me i've had it for almost a year so <laughs> yeah i know that's now to for fibro that's either causing it or fibro in general um so <laughs> if you think you have it if you are under a doctor and the doctors seem to be fobbing you off like they did with me or just not listening or not doing anything and you just feel like you're alone and you're not getting any support fight it i complained about my doctors 
probably should move doctors really but I don't want all the hassle because of all the medication I'm on and everything um yeah I fought with my doctors and it was actually a really really nice nurse that I've known for years there that actually referred me and she was so nice she said it must be so difficult being so young to not be able to do the things a young person should be able to do because physically well when I'm sat here I physically look fine um but I'm not and she basically said like a bit obviously you're kidding out at full-time school you'd want to get back into work you want to be able to do this that and the other and I can't do that because of the amount of pain I'm in and even though when I got diagnosed I was slightly gutted even though I knew I had it I was gutted because I was hoping it could be something that could be fixed but obviously fibro can't be fixed it's just manageable um but I fought my way through and now like I said I well I'm not under the doctor no more they discharged me but I am under a different department which specializes in fibro well first off tell them you want to get referred to a rheumatologist. I have never, I've gone to the doctor and said I want a diagnosis in fibro. They turn around and say, right, we'll do this one test. If this test comes back negative, we'll diagnose you. Came back negative, they didn't diagnose me. Um, it was only when a friend told me on New Year's Day that doctors cannot diagnose it. You have to see a rheumatologist at the hospital. So as soon as I could, I went to the doctors and says, I need a referral to a rheumatologist didn't even say like I think I said I wanted it <laughs> I said there's so many things wrong with my body that even if it's not fibro something needs sorting and that was when I, obviously I saw that nice nurse and she said yeah I'll refer you straight away so she gave me a massive she wrote a letter <laughs> listing all the things that's wrong with me um, and all the pain places of where, where things hurt basically and sent it off um, and yeah I got referred for a rheumatologist which I was meant to see in March the end of March but obviously Covid kind of yeah with everything going on got cancelled and then I recently saw them at um, the beginning of September so and then now I'm fully got a, an official fibro diagnosis and now I'm actually getting the support I need because um, like I said I got off the phone to um, a gentleman that works in one of the departments where it's an eight week fibro course it's not like course where oh well, it is course where you learn stuff but it helps you deal with the things so you go through like different exercises you can do to strengthen your muscles back but nothing like the gym he says one of them's just like spider crawl I've done that one before where um, I was at the physio with my shoulders and then one of them's just picking something up and putting it down it could be like, it can. Nothing like way too heavy, but it's gonna strengthen your arm, but then strengthen your grip, because that is strengthen, definitely strengthening for me. Um, and then diet, and then also the mental side, like I said, for me, like learning more about it. And he said, and it's about balancing. So he says, most people think, do minimum on the bad days, maximum on the good days. He says, but that maximum on the good days means it then triggers and then causes more bad days. He said, so you could have one good day and then three bad days after that because you did too much on your good day. He said, so it's balancing everything out. So you're doing the same amount of things on a bad day than on a good day. So it should equal it out rather than, yeah, trigger like having, um, yeah, a flare and stuff. Which, like I said, I'll probably do a video about it after I've done that because I'll learn more about it and have more things to share. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. It is so long, so I apologise. Edit as much out as I possibly can. But there's just so much that I want to share because, like I said, it's been a four-year battle for me. Probably not a four-year battle because I didn't know what fabric was four years ago. Um, at least three years, two year to three year battle for me, where one of my friends that I met like three years ago, three, it must be three years ago now, um, she has it and she was like, it sounds like fibro. Um, and then, yeah, from there. So I've had fibro for four years, just got diagnosed with it, knew I had fibro for three years, knew it was fibro, but no one helped, like doctor wise. 
so that's one thing that I really want you to avoid if you have a strong feeling it's fibro and you've got no other like things it could be I mean even if you've got certain things wrong with you like I know people that have got carpal tunnel also have fibro people that have arthritis also have fibro so if you can have medical connections within fibro it's fibro is just affecting your different parts of your body and it's about your brain signaling basically your brain telling you that your body is in pain even though physically there could be nothing wrong um it's like a, yeah like a, your brain just not working with your body properly so please please don't let it wait for four years because a lot of things could be avoided i have gotten worse over the past four years things got worse things did get better at some points but then they kept getting worse um, so things, a lot of things could be avoided and unfortunately they didn't and now I'm paying the price because of the pain but that's what I don't want for you guys so yeah, sorry for the rambling <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you are new but I hope you have an amazing rest of the day and I will see you soon